Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back. It is the Earthmaster back here on this uh, Friday afternoon. Welcome to the weekend. I want to jump in here real quick and uh, give everyone a heads up that we're starting to see elevated aurora conditions once again kicking up here. Uh, this is kind of a remainder of last night's or early this morning's G3 solar storm. Uh, but right now we're starting to reach up into the G1, G2 uh, category once again. And if you are out here across the northern tier states, it's very likely that you're going to be seeing some more auroras this evening as things are uh, continuing to get elevated from uh, kind of like a leftover remainder of that large CME that hit us earlier this morning, sparking up that uh, G3 class storm. Now things are kind of kicking up here in the KP index. Now this is just uh, recently observed up around the G1 class storm. I'm sure it's a little bit higher now. There's that G3 class storm that was observed earlier this morning. Right now, the current observation is G1. We are looking at the potential for a G2 class storm kicking up uh, tonight. And that is due uh, mainly in, uh, because of the... Um, let me bring up this other map here and show you guys. I meant to go to Solar Ham site. It's an awesome site to check out. Uh, but that is due mainly to the uh, BTBZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field. And I believe it is pointing south here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, current solar wind. I thought I had a, uh, a bookmark for this, but maybe I didn't. Maybe I do. I have hundreds of bookmarks. I don't even use half of them, but they're all interesting. Either way. Here's the current real-time solar wind stream. Noticing the separation here of the BTBZ component, we're getting more of a southward tilt, allowing a lot of this remainder solar wind to flow in uh, and create these elevated conditions there that we're seeing tonight. Now, it still looks as though we're getting quite a bit of speed kicked up from the current uh, solar wind stream that has been uh, uh, you know, thanks, elevated thanks to those uh, couple CMEs that have been Earth-directed. And uh, density is kind of up there as well. So this is kind of interesting to see this continue to ramp up for a second day. Um, I'm thinking that this will continue overnight. Doesn't look like there's any sign of it dying down. Here is the current Aurora forecast, 30-minute uh, Aurora forecast here. And, of course, we're just getting dark out here, about ready to get dark out in the West Coast. Obviously, the majority of the states out here, though, are entering into the nighttime hours. Uh, if I were you and you have clear skies, I would get out there, see if you can take a peek towards the northern horizon um, for, for the uh, auroras that are possible uh, later, well, right now, basically right now. Um, here's a forecast. This is uh, from the Space Weather Prediction Center. This is the view line right here. Now, last night with the G3 class storm, that was uh, a little bit further down into Oregon and uh, much more down into the Southern Plains states. And by the way, places like uh, Arizona and even Southern California had a very slight view of the auroras this morning. Had to be away from the cities and probably using a longer exposure time to get uh, some of those aurora lights that were visible way on the northern horizon. So this is the current view line here forecasted tonight. Uh, again, not quite as far, but we don't know exactly how uh, amplified this thing will kick up tonight. Right now, it's looking like it's uh, um, possibly could be exceeding the uh, forecasted levels. So get out there, northern tier states. Um, let's see what the cloud cover looks like across the area. I'm going to bring up the windy map here real quick and take a look at cloud cover. This is a pretty cool app. Uh, you can use it for many different options here. Fog, visibility, cloud base levels, but we're just after general cloud cover. And uh, out here in Northern California, unfortunately, we're not going to see it, uh, you, you know, even if we had a G, G4, G5, anything large, we wouldn't see it because of the cloud cover. But for the folks up here, maybe in the portions of Montana, South Dakota, portions of Wyoming, you guys, uh, if you're lucky, you, it looks like you got clear skies. But there is, of course, a lot of uh, views being obscured here across the Midwest and the Great Lakes area. So unfortunately, unless these things die off, uh, I don't think that uh, this is going to play out for you guys. So for those that are, though, obviously up in the Canada, 
uh, quite a bit of cloud cover, but there's a few breaks up here as well. Alaska, I'm going to get uh, a nice view as well. Uh, if you did happen to catch any of those auroras this morning, I'm kind of curious to see where uh, you guys seen them at and exactly um, you know your location and uh, what time you observed them and maybe what type of camera you're using. could be beneficial, uh, and we'll show your image here on the next update later tonight. Uh, on the Earthmaster Friday night show, I decided to barbecue because a couple sprinkles here fell out of the sky. So that's uh, that's put me in the mood for some barbecuing. But uh, either way, get out there, folks. The auroras look likely. Uh, the 30-minute data here is showing uh, a pretty decent chance here across the area of the uh, North American plate. We'll watch this amplify uh, as, it, of course, it gets darker over here across uh, further areas of the western portion of the North American plate. Uh, South America, or uh, not South America, wouldn't that be crazy? South America? Antarctica. Obviously looking like uh, they got quite the view down there as well. Uh, but not for sure how many viewers I have down there. Who knows? I mean, maybe I do, maybe I don't. It'd be kind of cool if I did, thinking about that. But uh, either way, folks, we'll be back here a little bit later on this evening. Uh, earthquake activity down in Southern California. Still kind of watching it. We have a 1.8 coming in to the Southern. Oh, this looks like, yeah, it looks like Southern California. Let's check this out real quick, see what we got. Still seeing some movement down here across this area of Southern California where they've seen a 4.8. Now, that's just not the area of interest. Right now, it's the entire area down here across Southern California that has been showing elevated earthquake activity in the last 24, 48 hours or so. Yes, the 4.8 down here. Along the Elsador Fault is the largest, but in general, uh, definitely been a noticeable uptick in earthquake activity. And this, this little spot right here off the plate boundary is a little interesting to me because this is the area that's capable of producing an 8.1. And this movement here is just off the San Andreas Fault. Don't like to see activity out here because of that reason. Uh, an 8.1 out here today would do some considerable damage. And uh, not a good way to start off November or uh, December if that were to happen. So still keeping an eye on the West Coast. We've got one little earthquake up here. Northern California, 1.6. Uh, haven't really seen any major migration of pressure out here across the Western Pacific. Still waiting on that. Uh, but until that happens, I think we need to watch the West Coast, Eastern Pacific areas right here for some further activity. We'll be back a little bit later on this evening, folks. Uh, there's that little earthquake in Petrolia, Northern California. I think that's about a 1.6 showing up there on the seismograph station. Now, a lot of people asking, well, it flatlined the uh, entire graph. Well, that tells me right there that it's very local to the station. Very local, if not on top of the station or very close nearby. Uh, sometimes it's hard to tell uh, the magnitude when it's uh, this close. But if this was a big earthquake, obviously we would see it show up on maybe other California stations, but it's not. But it's kind of hard to judge these little ones when they're very close and localized uh, to that seismograph station. But either way, keep an eye on Southern California and the West Coast. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Again, if you see any uh, cool auroras, send them, send some pictures my way.